What's going on, everybody? Ryan Leary here from Work Defined. It is the barf. It's a week, a look at the week that was. So you could be prepared for the week that is. My laughter is because of this guy, Mr. William Tinkup, who is waxing on and waxing off. <laughs> All right, story time. Pitch I looked over. What do you got? I looked over, and you look like Mr. Miyagi at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my dojo. So when everyone's like, what the hell is going on here? That's yeah, it. Yeah. That's what happens. Oh, man. All right. So the barf. We got a, a lot of good stuff that has gone on this week, I think. Yeah. We got some um, good stuff. What do you, do you, what do you want? Good stuff. You want to pitch uh, You want to pitch me or you want me to pitch you? What do you got? Yeah, you go first. Let's see what you got. All right. Let me pitch you on this deal. The Crunchbase Tech Layoffs Tracker. This can be found at uh, Crunchbase and it's start off tech layoffs and it's they've literally got a tracker and more than a hundred and ninety one thousand workers in the US based at tech companies were laid off in mass job cuts in twenty three, more in twenty four. So question I have for you is first of all, just going and look at a layoffs tracker, you know, that's that's definitely uplifting. Um but was this inevitable? You know, was this was this were we were we built up too much? Was this people making different bets, or did AI and Gen AI have something to do with the skill sets that were to be needed next? Changing. I, so, what's I, your I, take on that? There's a couple things here. One is, I think it was in, inevitable from the fact that at the time of the pandemic, we got crushed, right, and then everybody got hired back. At That's right. ridiculous rates, right? So right. all of that's correcting now. 200 to new 100, we get that. So I think that had a lot to do with it. Everyone right. hired back or they hired back expecting to do fantastic because everything is back. Right. It didn't pan out that way. And so yeah. it went back down. So I think, the, I think the market is just correcting itself, honestly. I don't think AI is killing us now. I don't think it's going to kill us. I think there'll be some shifts in jobs. No, I just think it's the skill set. So I agree with all of what you said. I think it's market conditions and it's right size. Yeah. Uh, that, so it makes sense on that level. However, when I dig deeper into it, I think that the skills of a tech worker are changing. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you know, you don't have to write code. I think the skills you, of every can, worker is changing. You know, well, yeah, but I'm, but in particular, tech base. Yeah. So I'm just kind of wondering, you know, if companies are pulling back from hiring, either because they can't find that specific talent, or they're just in a hold position until they kind of wait till the election, wait till the new year. Let's see yeah. how this AI stuff uh, plays out. But I believe that the 191,000 plus, I do agree with you. I think there's a market correction. An adjustment, yeah. etc. So yeah. Yeah. Now, if the stock market corrects and shoots up, I'll be happy about that. Well, it's at its highest right now. So I mean, it it's done. Yeah. It's it's you know we can't blame Wall Street. No. I mean, we can, but <laughs> we will. <laughs> Not, we will. And we will. Yeah. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So last week, I think it was last week, I talked about the right to disconnect. I might have done it the last couple right. of weeks. I th I'm starting to see a theme yeah, a here. Theme? <laughs> Four day work weeks and disconnect. three day work weeks. <laughs> Two day work weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, but this is this is different. This is because uh -huh. it's in the U.S. Okay. Okay. So, I want to get your thoughts on this because now that it's 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 being brought to light in the U.S., the workers' right to disconnect. Mm -hmm. Is it going to happen? So it's easy. Let's no. just get it out there. Common sense to make it. You're out of work. You're out of work. You're done work. You're done work. Shut it. Move on. But I know you're going to have a different thought on this. Oh, 100%. No, it's all about productivity. And a company is always going to be pushing to get more productivity for less, right? So that's the company's yep. interest is to make money. It's yield. So I'm paying you $75,000 and you have to get an email at 11 o'clock at night. You might perceive that as an inconvenience. The company is going to perceive that as do your job or we'll hire somebody that will do your job. 
And if so, the job description says nine to five or eight to six, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I mean, that, these are the things that we say that are nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, you've had corporate jobs. I've yeah, had corporate absolutely. jobs. Yeah. It, you, you're going to either do the work or they're going to replace you with somebody that will do the work. That's it. Okay. <laughs> you know, because they're in the business of making money. And if you don't like that, well, join a nonprofit. So we're still not doing the four day work week? <laughs> no, you can do three hours a week for seven days, and uh, uh, and, it, and it will work like that. But uh, but no, it, it's it's really this is a lot of you know Gen Z of, and millennials it's a lot of showmanship in, yeah. in Congress. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. We want to do the right thing, and at the end of the day, CEO emails you at twelve thirty into my. You know what? He or she is going to expect a response, and if you don't like that. Don't, don't play the game. Take your marbles and go home. So, let me pitch you this story. Microsoft launches the world's first AI PC. AI-powered PC built for the new era of work. So, this is on, uh, actually, it's on blogs.windows.com. So, you can go look at the Surface Pro 10 and kind of see what it's about. But it's, it's all AI. And what it reminded me when I was reading about it, it reminded me of the chip war, of what chips were in certain computers mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. ago, like what, yeah, what Intel chip. Or... Yeah, what what Intel chip did you have? So it got me to think about that, like, well, what AI do you have? What AI is going to be built into your computer? You know, and, and built, I mean, we've done this with smartphones in terms yeah. of, you know, speech to text and stuff like that. But now we're going to be buying PCs that are, AI is included. AI is in. Based on your now, AI platform. All right. Now, initially, I look at that, and I'm like, don't bet against Microsoft. And don't, don't bet against Microsoft and AI. So, But it will be interesting to see, okay, Macintosh and AI and Microsoft, are, these are two yeah. different PC manufacturers, right? Are They're not going to have the same AI. <laughs> I just can't see a world mm -hmm. where they're going to both say, yeah, let's use what? They're going to use different ones. So does that create a different work experience based on what AI you have? Possibly. <laughs> I, know that was a I got a hard question. maybe out of that. Okay. All right. I see where you're at. You know, I can just remember going to Best Buy and the guy is like, well, you could have the Intel iCore 7. You could have this. Well, what's the difference? It's $600 dude, more. Well, I'll process. Dude, now they're going to be selling the AI. So now at Best Buy, they're going to be saying, hey, this has got. Yeah, this has got ooh. the, the Tin Cup LLM. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be a fail. But yeah, that, they are. I mean, that is going to happen. You're right. All right. I've got a compliance story because you know I love me some compliance legislation yeah. and all that crap. Yeah. Utah stepping up to the stepping up to the to the okay. to the plate here. Utah law what? makes NDAs. I'm gonna. I'm not laughing at the matter. I'm laughing that we actually have to talk about this. <laughs> sure. Utah law makes NDAs regarding sexual misconduct unenforceable. Oh, I like that. I like it a lot. Absolutely. I like it a lot. Confidentiality around me. This way you can't bury it, which has been the... Uh, exactly. It's been the modus operandi for 100 years, right? So we're yeah. going to settle out of court. You're going to sign a confidentiality agreement, non-disclosure, et cetera. <laughs> yes, right. It never happened. It no. never happened. Now, that's so, going to be really interesting. Confident, here's the kicker. So confident, confidentiality clauses pertaining to sexual misconduct that were signed right. on January 1st, 23, okay. are now void and unenforceable. Workers who have previously filed a, a claim right. or previously signed an NDA, I should say, have three days to come forward from the date of this. So it probably oh, could very well be expired. Three days, I think, is a joke. I mean, come on. Like either do it or don't, right? Like one or the other. Um, right. So my first question is, why just three days, right? Just come forward. Don't put a time limit on it. Because because uh, lawyers created it. Because lawyers they, created it, and they don't want it to drag on forever. So yeah, that's um, that's just they're giving people an opportunity so they can say that they gave people an opportunity. But to your point, it's a it's, it's seventy two hours. So. Yeah, I mean, come, you haven't even heard the news story. Right. Before the time right. limit expired. 
anyhow, I like I like the fact that NDAs are gone. Fantastic. Well, no, NDAs as it relates to sexual harassment. Sexual harassment. I should yeah, sexual harassment. Right. 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 In the end, uh, you should you shouldn't have sexual harassment in the dark. No, that's where we need to no. shine the lights on those particular things, so that you know it, those things don't happen as much. No, so just... I love that. Now, what will be interesting for me in Utah is when this happens with the Church of Latter Day Saints. <laughs> so when this happens with the Mormon Church, because yeah, I mean the church just like yeah. every other church, mm-hmm. it's no different. Yeah. I mean it's relatively a cult but you know that putting that aside my bias aside the the idea that okay once it hits mormons will they will they retract it right but i think it's a great idea i think sexual harassment any of that any transparency you can get around i'd love to have a tracker on who's done it where and how and what they got away with I, so that we can I have the app that tells me which i really don't recommend <laughs> Is that like because, your grinder app? Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> but it you know puts their little red flag and tells you where yeah. the uh the, and yeah. I'm looking I'm like huh yeah this guy's this guy's quite, this guy's, this guy's horrible yeah you're no longer allowed to walk on the trails to the kids you know <laughs> let me look mortal story is stop harassing stop touching yeah. people stop getting be nice pervy. to people just just do fine. just do better did you say stop getting even herpes <laughs> no stop getting pervy. Oh my bad! <laughs> like, wow, that, that I mean, escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Just do better, my friends. Just do better. So, uh, here's a story I want to pitch you. Does pay transparency no contribute to turnover? Yes. So just okay. So you, you would be right. Payscale.com. Uh, Research and Insights, uh, CBPR, I don't know what that sounds for. Oh, can Compensation Best Practices Report. It's 15th annual. Anyhow, they actually agree with you that it does contribute to turnover. But as I was reading that, I'm, think, I'm thinking, well, is that just because it's new and people are you know, maybe shocked to understand or maybe shocked to understand that they're mispaid or underpaid or, or whatever, and that'll settle. Like, pay transparency, I don't think you can find a good counter-argument against mm-hmm. transparency, pay transparency, yeah. right? Like, it turns out it's a good thing. But is this just kind of the first wave of pay transparency kind of having some unintended consequences? And I will that so. kind of normalize over time? I think so. So yes and yes. I think it will normalize. I do think it's going to cause a wave of, of issues to come for employers. Right. Right. Not for the employees. The employees are finally getting going to get their fair share. As um, they should. Yeah. Yeah, as, as they should. Now, is it easy for the employer, and this is for people way smarter than me, but is it easy for the employer to say, well, Brian, you're making – X, William, you're making Y. Let's bring William up. This stuff. There could be a significant gap there that right. can't be made up immediately. It's got to be done over time. By the time you even get to that point, you're gone. Like you're right. far gone. You're, you're like, you know what? I'm out of here. And that's going to happen in droves. Um, and that's okay. I think that's okay. I think that's going to cause a correction in the marketplace for employees and especially right. on the employer side. Um, but so the I think longer the, tail of it is yeah, good. The longer tail is good. And I think that's where, I mean, we've been having plenty of conversations with marketplaces and gig marketplaces. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to help yeah. these types of 100%. solutions. Where, Ratings. Yeah. Look, I'm not getting as much as William. We've got each got 10 years of experience. I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. go do four gigs and I'm, make just as much I'm, money on my own time. I'm taking my talents to Miami. I'm taking my talents to Miami. It's just, <laughs> Way it goes. Uh, all right, well, what do I got, got some. I got some Oracle news. Oracle Fusion. Really? I feel like I'm yelling today. Am I yelling? No. Oh, no. I feel like I'm yelling. So yeah. Oracle Fusion, which kind of reminds me of Fusion the Blades, which. Yep. They need to lower their pricing. Number one. Let's just start there. <laughs> Oracle. <laughs> Who are we talking to? Yes, <laughs> James. James Bates. Shave. Like I had to stop using razors because it's too expensive. I had to go. Buy a razor razor to deal with it. You'll never know those problems. So stop. 
I don't own a razor. So I haven't owned a razor in 15 years. Yeah, well. Seriously, I've, I don't own a razor. When I go get my hair cut, which is rare, when I get my hair cut, I have them do my beard. Yeah, let's talk I don't about own, haircuts. I, I don't own a razor. I haven't gone to get a haircut in 20 years. So. I go to great clips. <laughs> my brother, my brother-in-law goes. He's like he may, and a lot of my friends go. They all have hair, and they make appointments. They got appointments. I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, you got an appointment uh, for? They're like, oh, get uh, a haircut and they show, show up. Me. Show up. I tip really well though. I am actually because I have them wash my hair, which is you. You should. <laughs> you know, it's electric. Yeah, but I have them wash my hair and uh, and trim my beard and all that type of stuff. And That's but, but I, I tip. They love me when they see me park. There, there's an excitement that runs through the great clips. <laughs> I think that's, not, that's everywhere. That is not just great clips. <laughs> All right, let me get back to Oracle here. Oracle, yeah, Fusion. Oracle deserves some airtime. So 100%. Oracle Fusion, right? They added some Gen AI into Fusion. Um, not groundbreaking, not earth shattering, but it brings their account to more than 50 Gen AI tools and use cases within Fusion. Which that I think is significant. Right now, it's nothing, nothing that I've seen so far that is like where we haven't seen this before. Right. Oracle has a right. massive client base, Sorry. right? And they're going which to means do, they're going to be sitting on a lot of data. Exactly, and they're going to be doing yeah. a whole ton of stuff. But where their where their clients are using it now. Um, all the all the fancy things like job categories, uh, landing pages, job right. matching, candidate assistance, 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 assistance. Right, we keep talking about that. Um, you know, I think they're getting close now in in their ecosystem to actually giving a recruiter, and this is where it gets interesting for me. They're actually giving the recruiter an assistant to do uh, their smart. job. Right. Yeah. So we've talked about this over the last couple of months or so where I, I really believe in the next couple of years as a recruiter, HR professional, everyone, everyone, you're going to have an assistant. That's not just yeah. your phone in your pocket. It's actually going to be, we always joke, it's a computer in your pocket. Like you're actually going to have an assistant now. You need dry cleaning. Good. You need to go to the, you know, you go into a restaurant. You don't have to go to open table, right? You're going right. to be able to do this stuff. And in recruiting, obviously no different. But I think this gets the Oracle client base, which is massive, very close to this. Well, I, I like it. First of all, I like it on every level. But just to start, throw it against the, let it fail. Let's yeah. see where it succeeds. Let's kind yeah. of calibrate. And uh, good for Oracle. Good for their no, it's clients. A, it's a good thing that you, it's a good point that you bring up. We're used to seeing fast moving innovation from startups that have right. five people throw it against the wall, see what sticks. I think what we're starting to see now is some of these larger companies like Oracle and yep. so forth. They're not afraid to fail anymore. They're, no, no, they're actually doing this stuff, and it's interleading the pack here for the most part, yeah. and failing a lot, and that's good. I think it's great. I think it's going to help everybody. Okay, so this story I want to pitch you is why is AI so bad at spelling? Because image because generators aren't actually reading text. AI is seemingly unstoppable, but it can't spell burrito. And then this is at TechCrunch, so you can uh, you can look up the article it yourself. But I like skip. I can't spell it either. I'm trying to spell it. Out. <laughs> Is it one R or two it's T's? So bad. I do this with tattoo. Is oh. it two T's and two O's? Right. I, you know, just give me a, a vowel. So, <laughs> like, I skipped the week of school where they went through the there, there, and there. And for majority of my life, I couldn't get the theirs correct. Don't skip like, school, I, I just, kids. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, I'm a poker. Uh, I'm a poster child for that. But, but the, the, the question I have for you is: Do you feel smarter when when you use the right tense or the right word, and you're like, nobody had to help me, and you're like, I got that? No, no, no. Yeah, I do. I, well, I have grammar a like, professional because yeah. I just want it to just tell me what to do. Yeah, because well, I, don't, I just want to use my brain. Yeah. To, to well, there's there's but, your answer on your question. <laughs> Your AI doesn't have Grammarly professional. No, it does is. not. No, it does not. That is a. That is a. That is. A, it's nice to see AI struggle. Yeah. So I actually, on some level, uh, emotional or intellectual or otherwise, 
it's nice to see that there's a struggle with AI, that it struggles. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's kind of human in that way. Like we call it artificial intelligence. Well, I don't think it's all that intelligent. So it's so it is artificial, but it's it's not that smart right. yet. I mean, we're all talking about what the future looks like and flying cars and shit. But like the fact that it can't spell burrito, I kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I can re- I can write you a research paper in 33 <laughs> seconds. I can't spell Don't burrito. I can't spell burrito. <laughs> oh right. my god! All right. Last week, I swear I I'm not going and looking at my the stories that interest me last week and looking for sequels. But Subway is However. back in the news again. So last week they were stealing tips from their employees. <laughs> Oh, if, if you want to, this is a subway tracker. We've got us. <laughs> we're, we're tracking all the things that subway does yeah. wrong. Okay, yeah. good, good. This week, they faced a fifty million dollars suit for sexual abuse at the franchisee level. So, mm. again, what are we doing here, right? So last yeah. week they're stealing. They they're they're on the hook for not not the same. And that was a and that was a mixture of franchise and corporate, right? Uh, the, la, last week's. Uh, no, or was no, that no, just that franchisees. franchisees? That was ten franchise, ten franchisees stealing yeah, yeah. tips, right? And so this, this week, is still franchisees. This is still franchisees. Now here's <laughs> here's Not where good. it gets interesting, right? So, so my initial thought in my mind's like, all right, look. AI is new. I get it. Newer. I get it. Background checking is not newer, right? Nah. We literally just had a conversation about this, right? It's not new. There are so many, so many solutions out there to figure this out. It's not even worth discussing. Now, however, here's the deal, and I, I probably should go back and quote it so I don't get it wrong. However, Subway hired this person with a criminal past criminal harass sexual harassment background Not bad. brought him in as a manager in the store. Mm. And what do you think happened? Yeah. Shocking. Not shocking. Exactly. Um, it's now, here, the, here, to here, me, here, this here. is real simple. Subway corporate has to do a better job of vetting franchisees and right. set laying down ground rules. Cause, cause again, both cases, these are franchisees do, doing the wild west. And that impacts all franchises, but it also impacts the, the corporate brand. You know, they just need to do a better job. In my opinion, you just do a better job of laying down ground rules and not just selling your franchises to anybody. Yeah, well, it's probably so, most people's opinions. Now, well, here's, here's the thing. It's a, so it's the lawsuit is both to the franchisee. Mm. and the brand itself yeah that's just a lawyer here's why no they're a joint employer they've applied through and were background checked i'm i someone's got to fact check me on this but from what i've seen oh interesting they go through the subway corporate hiring process as they go through the franchisee so it's a joint shocked i'd be shocked if that's not joint if that's if that's i mean i know that some franchises help but I, I, from a legal perspective, I just can't imagine that they'd open themselves they up would, to that, that exactly, exposure. Yeah, yeah. So, anyhow. So, I think that's uh, a lawyer and doing a land grab. Potentially, uh, yeah. yeah. Either yeah. way, it's not right. And Oh, I mean, look, no, no. What are they going to be in for, for next week? Don't hire. <laughs> I mean, let's figure. Stealing tips? <laughs> yeah, this is good. Hiring criminals? Uh, yeah. All right, yeah. let me pitch this one to you. Stress affects Gen Z employees the most, according to a survey by Calm.com. So you can find this on Calm.com, the business part of it. It's the voice of the workplace report. And uh, it got me thinking as I was looking at it, uh, it, it got me thinking, what's the definition of stress? You know, like I've had this ongoing inner dialogue about when we were, when we were cave people, Stress was not being eaten by a dinosaur, right? This, so there was stress. It's not like you can go back into a point in time, any point in time in history of humanity and go, yeah, there's no stress there. It's just a different type of stress. And so I don't think there's a, a, a human experience where you have no stress. Your just stress is different. 
It's you know, you could be a billionaire. Do you do you think for a moment that billionaires don't have any stress? No, of course yeah, they have well, stress. I'm sure, yeah. It's I mean, just I different. Know, but I'm assuming. Yeah, no, I'll I'll never know. But <laughs> however, it's it's their stress is different. So it got me thinking. It's like okay, so Gen Z employees you know, stress affects them the most. What's the definition of stress? And how are we applying that? that is it, it isn't universal, that I know. Because your, your definition of stress and my definition of stress are going to be completely different. Yeah. Right? So, but, it, but I found it interesting. It's like, okay, what are they stressed about? Like, it got me, it's a great report. And, uh, and it's, you know, a lot of people, you know, again, it's it's put out by calm.com so of course they would care about stress because they're trying yeah. to de-stress people which is a great thing not a bad thing it sounds like um, you're saying calm.com calm.com calm. calm.com c a l m the app you don't have Laura. Calm. You, Laura. you don't have that app on your phone <laughs> no anyhow i probably I think, should st- <laughs> i'll drive you to it you're good <laughs> so stress subjectivity of stress so that's the bit. Go there, take a look at the report, and then, you know, come to your own conclusions. I mean, I like it. All right. Succession planning. Ooh. Yeah. This is uh this is big news. This is succession planning is at it? its finest. I was excited when I found this article okay. because <laughs> I once went on a roller coaster and I was scared. I was really scared. It was a really big wooden roller coaster, and I never wanted to go on a roller coaster again. And it how, just happened. How old were you? I was probably ten or twelve. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is a long time ago. <laughs> but I say? It, it was traumatizing. Okay? Mid thirties? Like, what are you yeah. talking about? So, anyhow, so Cedar Point settled an age discrimination suit, paying a whopping fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Right. To lunch, I get it. So anyway. I, I read, I'm reading through this and I'm, I'm digging through and I'm going through because it was really interesting to me on why this is. And it, I, this isn't, this wasn't an age discrimination case that says, hey, we're not going to hire old people. Probably quite the opposite. They hire a lot of old people to do that stuff. <clears throat> so anyhow, I started reading through and going through all this stuff. And then I thought to myself, how would the way that they're defining the way that they're defining ageism and all this stuff, how, how would chat GPT define succession planning hmm. with ageism? So I asked it. This is the definition from chat GPT with ageism. Okay. Implementing succession plans demonstrates to younger employees that there are opportunities. <laughs> yeah. Starting off good. There's a path. There's a path here. Implementing succession plans demonstrates to younger employees that there are opportunities for career advancement within the organization, yeah. getting better, as the older workers at the company <laughs> start to age out. Define older. Yeah, Interesting. Define older. So huh. here's the deal. So they provide housing at below market rates for some of their employees right? because they need people from all over to staff the parks, right? Unless you're old. <laughs> you're, <laughs> anybody you're, who's you're over. You have your own per- mobile home. You're good. <laughs> Just plug in. Anybody who's over 30 years old was not offered below <laughs> market house. You had to pay full price because you were older. Ah. Right. So I thought that was interesting. So what do I do? I keep digging deeper because I thought, well, there's got to be more of this stuff. So I'm going to start off with Texas because Mm. it's actually the first one that came up. Uh, Texas-based car dealership has to pay, this is all recent, $145,000 to settle claims that fired a longtime employee after they had heart surgery. Yeah. Well, that's the an age, insurance thing, too. Yeah, the age so and the surgery and all that stuff. The, Louisiana, yeah, the, a Louisiana manufacturing plant must pay 105000 to settle allegations that it fired a worker who wouldn't retire. <laughs> a Georgia-based senior living facility for, um, for allegedly firing a 78-year-old receptionist due to her age and her disability 
She wanted to work until she died. Whenever you see an and, you always have to question, was it one or the other or a combination of both? Right. So the and in that is her, her age and her disability. So those are kind of multivariable. So we don't know, is it age? Check. Is it disability? Check. Or is it age and disability? And even something else that wasn't disclosed. I'm kind of thinking age and disability doesn't matter. It could have been just straight up disability. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I mean, it could have been. No, no. But but again, if if I like the clear cases of ageism. Sure. They fired somebody because they're over the age of yeah. whatever it is. And they didn't give you housing because you were over 30. Right. <laughs> which, which, again, if that's couched in terms of, hey, we're, we're helping people under the age, of, you know, right outside of college because they don't have credit, they don't have all these things, so we're trying to help early stage workers. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, but it's got to be couched in, in different ways. An arbitrary thirty number is like, you Who know. That first of all, <laughs> you should have your you should have your shit together by thirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, most men's brains don't evolve until thirty, uh. but but uh, but yeah, you should have some of your shit together. All right, let me do. We got I got three acquisitions. Ooh. Uh, to talk about, so Cornerstone uh, acquires Tailspin, and Tailspin is immersive learning so if you if mm-hmm. le- learning by doing and so basically what tailspin is expert at is a vr ar metaverse simulations etc so you add that to what cornerstone already has and all the stuff that they can do in learning it's pretty good it's a great acquisition and i love seeing acquisitions like this because it's just smart they could have built it no need no need go buy tailspin integrate it into things and then Give your clients the ability to do immersive learning. So, love that. Got another one? Yeah, y'all go through all three. Go through your funding. Let's talk money. Well, these are all acquisitions, but yes. Oh, acquisitions. So, Culture, (laughs) there's money was exchanged. (laughs) Uh, Culture Amp is uh, acquiring uh, people analytics platform Orgnostic. You can find this on cultureamp.com, go into their news section. So think of uh, Orgnostic as a newer multi-source uh, analysis platform. And so what the combination of these things does is it makes Cultureamp a one-stop shop for engagement analytics. And Cultureamp was really good at engagement. That's how they started, etc. Now they're adding a multi-source analytics and so again, this is kind of just great examples of cult corporate development, kind of filling in the holes. Yeah, like you, you can see, kind of like it's okay. We could go build that. Mm, no, let's just go. Let's go buy Orgnostic. Um, and I'll do uh, Service Now. Yeah, let's do so it. So let's Service Now and it announces two acquisitions for industry. They get and uh, another yeah, one. Smart Daily Management. Uh, at, application so they bought two two companies to drive imminent innovation for smart industrial environments and connected workers so i dug into it's on uh, servicenow.com so you can go into their media the press releases and read a little bit about it but for industry is a mobile enabled application to make the shop floor more intuitive and efficient and enjoyable so that's that's that one. And so it kind of makes sense why ServiceNow would buy that just alone. Smart daily management, that's for me and why, creates a more, e, more efficiency around time-consuming tax, tasks uh, in, the indi- in, in their industrial consumers t- to drive kind of operational efficiency and excellence and all that stuff. So I think all, all of these, are so four acquisitions in total by three companies, I think it's just great examples of kind of exceptional corporate development where people are looking at things and saying, you know what, that this helps a specific part of ServiceNow's customer base, the folks that have shop floors, so the industrial uh, folks. So they, they went out and got two two pieces to then integrate into what they're doing to help that, that, that whole vertical of their clients. So good for them, good for their customers. I like that's it. All, that's all I got that's on acquisitions. That's all you got on acquisitions? I do have a, a funding, but we've I got some research as well. So what do you gotcha. where do you want right. to go? 
Let's go to Walgreens. Ooh. I'll go to Walgreens. So I've got a couple of pregnant stories this week. Hmm. I swear, this is like continuation from week to week. We had okay. the the uh, the pregnant workers fair act yep. at PWFA last week. Yep. Walgreens has been smacked with a two hundred and five thousand dollar fine after a pregnant. They don't have a worker. place. What's that? They don't have a place for. Uh... No, 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 no. The worker was has the worker miscarried after oh. being denied an emergency leave. Oh, oh, yes. So oh, I don't like any of that. Yeah. So now, obviously, we don't know the inner workings here. However, what the what the article is about, and and this leads into another story too, was the woman started to spot while yeah. on shift and asked to leave. She was told that they need, she can, but they have to find uh, someone to cover her shift. Time went by. They didn't find anybody, she asked. They still couldn't find anybody. Ultimately, she worked her entire shift. And then the bad news. Oh, that's just, this is just a bad, this is just bad all around. It's just bad all around. Go without the talent. Your customers can suffer for, you know, for whatever, you know, the the inconvenience is. Yeah, so what? It's inconvenient. But if someone's spotting, they got to go. Yeah, that, it, it, I mean, it's time. Health is health, right? And, and yeah. I mean, you can use your judgment. You know, if you have a headache, okay, maybe. Okay, look, go, go lay down in the back. Pregnant, that's something different. And so, oh, yeah, I, yeah, that's a, that's a, I, I had it when I worked for happening. Walmart a uh, hundred years ago. I ran, it was CSMs, I ran the front end all the registers and and uh, cashiers and people that got carts and stuff. And I had, you know, they do the little blinking light. So I'd have to go mm-hmm. over and come void checks or whatever. And uh, I go over to a gal. She's about my age. Like, I was 18. I might have been 17. So I go over. I'm like, hey, what's going on? What do you need me to do? And she turns to me and whispers in her mirror. She's like, my period started. I'm like, okay. <laughs> she goes, yeah, but I don't have. I said, you know what? I'll take over here. I want you just go get the things you need. Yeah. And uh, we have aisles come back when you, just go get them. Come back, yeah. <laughs> come back when you come back. I got this. Don't worry about it. And let because I mean, I didn't know what to do. A, you know, yeah. uh, I didn't grow up with girls or sisters or any of that type of stuff. So. Like, first of all, I just didn't know. But once I did, it's like you have that moment as a manager to then react in a in a way that basically says, I, I, I get it. I don't get it, I'm here but I, I get, get it. it. Yeah. You go. Like, I just told her to go pull shit off the shelf. Yeah. I'm like, I'll I'll, I'll expense it. Just go get whatever you need. <laughs> yeah. You wanna, yeah. You want to go get a Bartles, Bartles and James while you're at it? Cool. Do it. Go get what you need. I'll be here. I can shut down the register. It's not a big deal. Yeah. All right, so, let me give you a couple. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. That's fine. We'll switch. Neurodiversity in the workplace. Are org- organizations overlooking their highly capable neurodivergent employees when creating conditions for success? You and I had a wonderful podcast with uh, mm-hmm. Crystal Lay about neurodivergent talent. And this is put out by EagleHillConsulting.com. They have a report about uh, neurodivergent talent, etc. And what one of the things that stuck out to me when I read was unemployment runs as high as eighty percent for this group when they're the when they are working highly capable neurodiverse people are often unemployed and I thought to them, like this is just a talent pool so you have to shift some things around you might have to do some different things in the workplace maybe in recruiting but there's a whole huge talent pool. Like what we uh, what we talked to Crystal about, there's a talent pool we're just skipping. And uh, so, if you want to read that report, EagleHillConsulting.com, and you'll be able to find it. All right, Ted Cruz is back in the news. Did he ever leave? No, I, mean, I don't know <laughs> if this is actually Ted Cruz. I'm just getting with Ted Cruz. However, <laughs> what did we say last week? So Ted Cruz came up. I forget what. But this does have to do with Texas again. This is like a theme. My yeah. PWFA, the pregnant women, the yeah. pregnancy issues at work in Texas. So yeah. 
Texas sues to challenge sues the Fed to challenge the PWFA, the the protection for shocking. workers. Yeah. So what they're saying, they're not saying that it's not a good idea. What they're saying technically is that, they are. But tech, yes, go ahead. Yeah, it's not valid legislation because the House did not have quorum <laughs> when they voted because the they did some virtual versus in person. Yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah. So this was an attachment to the previous story. Um, right. Because I just thought to myself, like, why? Like, what are we yeah. doing that we or have you, to yeah. we have to do stupid shit like this? So, you know, the w- 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 with a PWFA, just so people understand, um, there there are a couple of things listed in there. Especially, and this is kind of where Walgreens kind of was like, huh? Eh? Right, you know, right. and some other employers, which you know, it's really, it's really fascinating. Not just that they don't have feeding rooms or pumping rooms or any of that. They actually, per, employers are preventing women who are pregnant or post, you know, postpartum from doing certain things like uh, carrying water bottles and having yeah. drinks with them as needed on the work floor, right? That's Things dumb. like that. Having different, yeah, having having multiple or additional prolonged restroom breaks. So these are things that are outlined in this in yeah. this in this protection act. But I I thought it was fitting that well, Texas and was again, the one to say it didn't have quorum. Well it could be Florida. It could be a lot of these states which is mm-hmm. crazy state legislatures. Uh you know, you got several states that are kind of in the same Yeah boat and so yeah i i think it's just dumb because you're not doing the right thing for your employee like when you get right down to it if if that if that person needs extra water breaks or extra bathroom breaks do you either care or you don't care about your employees like it can be black and white this is just a simple accommodation yeah and i think we need to think about accommodations we want to retain great talent you think of like, what do you need to be successful? I used to tell employees this all the time, like tools and resources you need to be uh, successful. You need to tell me. I can't guess. I don't know what's going on in your mind, but you need to tell me. If you tell me, you have half a chance of me actually providing those things. But if you right. don't tell me, you have a 100% chance. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Let me so, tell you. Uh, oh, no. There's, thi- there's more. There's more. Okay. There's more. But there's wait. A Another thing. This is in the. <laughs> this is this in the same breath. Texas blocked a they 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 moved to block a second ruling for the NLRB. <laughs> Isn't right? that shocking? So yeah, yeah. this is around, oddly enough, connecting with the uh, the subway story. Um, different altogether, but it connects because we talked about joint employers. Right. So what they're saying is that uh, the ruling in the, in the case was issued. Well, so what they're saying is that the definition of joint employer isn't what it is interesting that actually yeah. could affect the peo business it, yes and so who owns, under, who owns the employee who owns the employee right and so under the new rule employers could be deemed as joint employers if they had an employment relationship with the employees under common law agency principles which you have to right. define that right. and not or and they shared or co-determined matters governing governing essential terms and conditions of employment. It's a Texas thing, man. You guys are. I I I'm gonna have to dig into that one myself yeah. because I I think that franchises are pretty well set up that when they sell the franchise, the person takes on all that responsibility. But I, I I'm gonna check into that. Yeah. All right. Let me give you two pay related stories because we got about five minutes left. So first one is from uh, WTW, which is Willis Towers Watson. So for people that have been in the game for a long time, that's basically who it is. Here's a quote. 2024 employee patrons expect higher pay increases to continue according to a new report. That's at their website, WTWCO.com. So what the, what, when you look at the report, it's a lot about market data mm. and, a, you know, quality market data. Remember, when you pay someone, there's really only three ways, classifications that you pay. But it's either above market rate, at market rate, or below market rate. And so having an idea of what market rate is, where you are or where they are, whatever, or what the position is, uh, being able to have quality data so your comp team can 
can he, he at least get you to market rate. I think a strategy of below market rate is not sustainable. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes you just need to pay above market rate, like a house, and sometimes you pay at market rate. So that is tied to Gartner CFO survey shows employee compensation to go faster than inflation and in 2024. <laughs> so that's at Gartner.com. You well, can I believe into, Gartner, so I mean, hell. Yeah. I, yeah. I, so they surveyed a bunch of CFOs, and they're basically saying, yeah, comp is, uh, yeah, it's it's not going to grow faster than inflation. I don't think that that's going to end well. <laughs> Newsflash. I think, I think that. I think they could have summed that up in, uh, hey, Titanic. Yeah. Nice to see it. Uh, no boy. So those are the, the two kind of comp stories. Uh, again, you, Willis Towers Watson and Gardner, respectively. All right. I got two last stories, but what do you got? All right. So I'm not going to go through the whole story here, but I do want to get your take on this because right. – <clears throat> You do have a take on this, and you're you're pretty avid yeah. on this. So, sure, I believe that there is a misunderstanding in the workplace, and in the headlines when we read DEI is being cut, yeah, is being cut out. So I I was watching a panel uh, news discussion, sorry, with um, I forget the guy's name, the CEO of uh, HP. And so he, what he was saying is very similar to our conversations that it's not about D, E, and I, right? It's evolving. It's under the umbrella of inclusivity. Yeah. And that's how they, they approach it at HP. And so I thought this would be a good, good opportunity to get kind of your 30-second take on this because you, you do actually have some good thoughts here. Yeah, the, the D, you throw out the big D. The D is uh, under attack from right-wing Republicans because they see it as a uh, racist or reverse racism, right. um, which is you know stupid on so many levels. But that's kind of the bit. That's how that's how they're selling it to the to the people that follow them, and so it's under attack. And so you saw this play out in the Supreme Court where they took away kind of on the admissions. You can't make college admissions based solely on race. Uh, that's coming to work. So it's, they're going to they're take away affirmative action. They're also going to – they're attacking at the state level and at the federal level, level diversity initiatives because they, they've lumped diversity initiatives into quotas, into not meritocracy or merit-based. Yeah. And so that's racist, or at, at the very least, it doesn't set up white males for success that they've had for, you know, 2,000 years. So, so the thing is, is, you're looking for what is a winnable argument. And, and you can continue to make a, a winnable argument around diversity, because I think everyone that's rational understands the importance of di- di- diversity. Sure. But if you want to just skip to the place where you can create an, a defensible argument, you just talk about inclusion. We're just going to include everyone, which could get you to some of the outcomes of equity and equality and belonging and diversity. But, you know, just expect them to change that language around exclusivity or inclusivity is inclusivity with the exception of white males. So, uh, it's, it. that's uh it's unfortunate that that's even being it's under, even mm-hmm. under attack all right two things real quick white house report which you know why was i reading a white house report let's just start with that uh, white house report suggests that 10 percent of u.s workers are in jobs highly susceptible to disruption from ai mm-hmm. performing tasks most likely due to ai implementation however this doesn't doesn't imply job loss and uh, taking over some task, leaving others for humans. So 10% seems really low. Like this is a 2024 report. So you can go to whitehouse.gov and go look at the economic uh, report from the president. And it, it just, when I, when I saw 10%, I'm like, that's, first of all, <laughs> that, yeah. that just seems like a low number, which made me think, does our government have any idea what's going on with AI? Mm-hmm. Like, like, is this one of these deals that government, all for all government, not just our federal government, all government just lags? 
they're 10 years behind. And so they're throwing out numbers like 10%. And it's like, mm, pretty, think, pretty much, pretty sure that's good. That the number is more like at least 60%. So go take a look at it. It's actually a, a fun read. I had not read an economic report by the president before. So it's a good bit. Now, this is a backstory that we should have covered a couple weeks ago. Should have. And, and we missed it. Right. Well, you missed it. So Workday Workday <laughs> commits an additional two hundred and fifty million investment capital to uh to Workday Ventures to power innovation. Now, they put some money into Paradox.ai. So this was before the this was before the investment uh into or the acquisition of higher score. Right. This actually happened before that. So they're 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 bolstering with this with paradox hired and with beamery they're bolstering what they're doing in recruiting and hot workday recruiting so we just wanted to make sure to go back and say you know what workday workday commits a bunch of money to them and this was right around the change of the ceo from aaron to adam so i don't know if that you know i don't causation or correlation but but it was right around the same timing so yeah. That's all I have. That's all. <laughs> That's all I got. This is it. This is the bar for the week. Thank you all for listening so much. If you're 100%. still listening, subscribe and like us everywhere. We will be out at shows uh, coming up to you soon. So if you see us out there, please, please, please say hello. And I'll, I should start saying this in the beginning of every episode. 100%. Have t-shirts sweatshirts hats you don't need them you're from a vendor send them over i love free things there you go and we're out